There are five big mistakes people make when washing their four-wheel drive, and chances are you've been making a few of them. I know I certainly have. If you love your four-wheel drive, you really do need to watch this one. Chances are you're gonna learn a heck of a lot. I know I certainly will. Let's get stuck right into it. Now, of course, this Defender isn't my vehicle. You would have seen it before on our show. It's my mate, Justin. Justin, come on here, mate. Hey, Good mate. to see you. Good to see you. Now, thanks for bringing a muddy four-wheel drive to my place, but I've actually done this on purpose. You see, Justin's got years of experience detailing four-wheel drives, and I wanted to pick your brains, mate, learn a lot. I, chances are I've probably been doing it wrong all these years, yep. at least making mistakes <laughs> along the way, as most people probably have. Now, what are the five biggest mistakes a lot of people make? I will start at mistake number one, and that's people going straight in with a sponge and just trying to rub all this off and scratching and swirling all into your paintwork. Well, I reckon a lot of people probably make the mistake thinking that as soon as they soap the vehicle up, she's right to start scrubbing. No, 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 that is not <laughs> correct. <laughs> First up, what you want to do is get a good quality wash, yep. foam it all up. That'll really help down to break down all this mud that's really stuck on there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pressure wash it off and then you whistle left with a nice clean surface underneath. And if you really want to then go after that with a mitt, you can, because you're not going to scratch into your paint. Because if you do that right now, you're going to get swell marks and scratches absolutely everywhere. Yeah, and that's the last thing you want. You think you're doing the right thing, mm. trying to wash your four-wheel drive. You're actually making it worse exactly. by scratching it up. Yeah. All right, let's get stuck into it, mate. Step number one, let's go. Let's do it. Well, I've got to say, mate, I'm actually surprised how well that worked. You can just see that mud is actually falling off the vehicle, which was, was the plan in the get-go, try and loosen everything up. What's the next step, mate? Next step, just pressure wash it off. Pressure wash, so not grab a Don't sponge. get a sponge. Yeah. Start getting a that. scrub. No, because it's still obviously sand and mud on the vehicle. You do that, you're gonna create swells of the paint. You're actually gonna scratch the vehicle. So you don't wanna do that. Uh, even though it looks like it's pretty clean at the moment, you're saying hit it with a high-pressure hose. High-pressure hose, or else you're just going to be putting sandpaper all through your paint. Yeah, makes sense. I'll get out of the way, mate. Give this thing a spray, yep. and then we'll see where we go next. Excited. Well, mate, it's looking, you know, 90% clean right yep. now. I mean, as soon as you hose all of the old exterminator off, all that mud, grime, sand, it's just falling straight onto my driveway. The, the vehicle's looking really, really clean, yeah. but obviously there's a few little imperfections. How do we get those off and make it really clean? Microfiber noodle mitt. Yeah, not a sponge? Not a sponge. Okay, Definitely so- Definitely not a sponge. So you'll hit it with that, but first you want to soap the vehicle back up again. Yep, we'll just soap it back up, put a bit more foam on it, and then we'll go with a microfiber noodle mitt. Yeah. and then wash it off again. rinse it off again. And it should be pretty clean by yeah, that stage. It'll be good to go. All yeah. right, let's do that. We're giving our microfiber cloths a little bit of a soak down so they're not super dry when we hit the vehicle. Is there any technique to this, mate? We're we just gonna start giving it a scrub or how do we do this? So the way you gotta do it is never go Circles. in circular motions. That's exactly what I was about to start doing. Yep. <laughs> exactly what I was about to start doing. What sort of correct way to do so it? So either go side to side yep. or up and down and right, stay so along that. That's exactly what I would have yeah. started doing. Like, I think that's a common misconception. See, I nearly did it straight yeah. away. So just straight side to side. Straight side to side. There you go. Yeah, okay. Going from top to bottom, side to side mo movements, and yeah, that's how you clean a car without getting scratches all over it. That's a good tip to know. All right, let's get into it, eh? So the reason why we're going to use the microfiber noodle mitt is because how it picks up dirt. So you've got these long strands here. Dirt can go back up into the mitt and you won't be rubbing in that debris, dirt, sand, grit straight back onto your paint. Whereas if you're using a sponge, it's got nowhere else to go. It's just gonna be on the surface of that sponge. So when you rub it back into it, you're gonna rub everything back into the paint that you just got off of it. Well, it's looking Mickey Mouse, mate, but I've noticed you haven't even made an attempt to clean underneath. Now, not no. that it is very, that's actually pretty clean <laughs> considering all the mud you've been driving through. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> it's very, very clean. And what's the secret there? Uh, well, before I went away, I just put some chassis shit on the night before. Yep. And you go through a bog hole and it kind of just droops off. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it doesn't actually stick to it. It's, it's obviously dirty yeah, underneath. Yeah, What most people would probably do is hit it with a pressure washer. That's, that's what I would do typically. Um, what's the go with cleaning the underbody of your four-wheel drive? Well, I mean, along areas like that, you can hit it with pressure washer. Like straight on the chassis? Straight on the chassis. But when yeah. you're going back up and in here, and you're going where all the cabling and wires are, you don't want to be smacking that with pressure. Because it's going to push. What's that? Oh, you're going to push all the dirt and sand up further, harder to reach. Okay. It's going to sit in these little nooks and crannies, and I mean, you're never really going to get it out. So how do you wash the underneath of your four-wheel drive? So the trick is high volume, low pressure. And I've got something over here if you want to come check this out. I think you'll really like it. Check this out. Justin just gave me this to play with. Now, back in the day, I used to use a garden sprinkler, and I'm sure a lot of you guys would have done the same. Now, the problem with that, of course, is it works a trick, but it does take ages to get it right. This way, you can actually control the flow to flood it right out. 
Let's see how it goes. Look at that. You can see the dirt falling out. So the really cool thing about the Sand Assassin is it comes with different quick connects, so you can actually change the mode. Now, you saw the flood mode, that works really well in the main part of the underbody. I'm gonna change it up to jet mode. Now, if you've got stubborn mud and grime on the chassis or under the diff like we do here, this mode is gonna blast it all off. Then we can go back to the flood mode just to make sure all the stuff that's been loosened off goes down onto the concrete and not up into the vehicle. So now the underbody's completely clean, we've flooded that out. It's looking really nice, but mm. of course there's gonna be stuff still stuck inside those chassis rails. Now, what's the best way to clean that, mate? Well, we can use a chassis one like this yep. and stick it into each of the holes and do it manually. So, I mean, it works really well. Yep, chuck it on. Look at that. It just flushes just, everything out. Just flushes it out. You can see dirt and grime coming out of that already. And what, uh, do you, what do you want to do? Just basically keep that going until it's nice and clear. Until it's running clear water. Yep. Yeah. You just keep that going, run through each That's, one. So you basically go through the whole vehicle, find every hole that you can, yep. and, and, and follow that same process. Yep, but I've got something else you might want to have a look at. Yeah, go on. Something even easier. <laughs> what have we got? We come around to the back. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got a hose fitting. Got a hose fitting here. Plug this in. Let it go. Hands-free chassis flushing. Yeah, right. So, <laughs> so hang on. That's <laughs> you got it completely plumbed all the way through each of the chassis rails, all the way to the front. Right. So you can just literally do that, set and forget. Yep. Go crack a coal one, something like that. That's and, it. And the vehicle's just washing itself. Yep. Now. Fit once, forget, and you're good to go. Now that we've flooded all the chassis rails with water, we've got a bit of salt exterminator, we're gonna do the exact same thing and give that. So just clip that straight in. Yeah, we'll give it some water. We've got salt exterminator coming out, all the holes in the chassis, so everything's gonna be nice and clean in there. This is a really handy product. Now obviously, you need to install this into your vehicle, so it comes with hoses that go inside the chassis rails, obviously it leaks out and is the best way to clean your vehicle, but the cool thing is it's set and forget. So as soon as you get back from a trip, just plug it straight in, clean inside those chassis rails. If it's anything like my vehicles, chances are you've, your vehicle's got stacks of clay and mud and stuff in there. You've probably neglected it inside of your chassis rails. I think a lot of people don't even think to clean that. So the cool thing is Justin sells all these products on his website. It just makes washing your vehicle so much easier and so much quicker. Well, here's a new one that I just learned. Um, after you finish doing all that hard work washing your vehicle, you want to seal off that hard work. 100%. So we've got a couple of products here, Justin. Take us through what we're about to do, mate. Yep. So next up, we're going to put some salt seal on the top side, just at a one to nine dilution ratio. Spray that on, sit for about five minutes, rinse it off. And then for next time, when you go on a trip, it's just going to be that much easier to rinse off afterwards and clean. Yeah, right. So it protects all your hard work and then it's also preventative when you go off road the exactly. next time. It's going to make it easier that's to clean. That's what it's all about. See, that's, that's something I'd never do. Yeah. And I think 90% of people out there, as soon as you wash your car, yeah, you're done. Mm. But this is just that final little thing. It's not that hard as well. Chuck it in, foam the vehicle up, wash it off. Good. And then this one, chassis shield, that's sort of, the name says it all really. Yep. <laughs> what are we going to do with that? We're just going to spray that straight on the chassis. Just make sure you clean it beforehand. Yep, like we have. Yep, wait for it to dry. Spray this on about a day or two before your trip. That's it. And that's it. And then again, next time you go through mud, sand, salt, all that sort of jazz, mm. that stuff's not going to stick to the underside of your vehicle. Very cool, mate. All right, yeah. you grab this one. I'll do this one. Let's get to work. Let's go. Now the cool thing about this is you can be a little bit agricultural in the way that you apply it. I've got runs and all sorts of stuff, it doesn't really matter. You basically just spray it on and set and forget. So you don't have to do anything else other than spray it on. It really is super easy and super quick as well. The way I understand it, it basically turns the underside of your vehicle into like a Teflon pan. So Teflon non-stick, that's the whole idea behind this. So when you go off road, and you typically want to do this a couple of days before you go bashing through the mud again, yep. You let it set on the bottom of your vehicle, yep. and what next time you drive through mud, it's just so much easier to get off when you when you're back home. So that's why we seal the top side of the vehicle and the bottom side. Yep. So it's a bit of preventative maintenance. Obviously, keeps it looking cleaner for longer. But just when you do go off road, and we know that if you own a four wheel drive, you're going to take it out to use what it was built for. You're going to get it dirty. But then if you can keep that preventative maintenance, make sure it's easy to clean off afterwards. You save yourself so much time and effort. Not exactly. to mention the cost of more products and stuff like that. Another tip for chassis shield: if you've got some steelies and you want to keep them in good condition, or just kind of bring back that gloss and shine to them, you can just put some chassis shield around in the areas it's 
kind of evenly coat it. Put some on a microfiber towel. And then you can just kind of work it in. Well, mate, I reckon she's come up an absolute treat. And I just want to take you back to the start of the day. You rocked up at my place. It's a bit overcast today. You're actually quite excited by that. And I thought, I wish it was nice and sunny for you, but it's not. Um, why is it important to have an overcast day? Overcast day? Well, if you don't have cover, you want to avoid direct sunlight okay. at all costs. Yeah, and why is, why is that? That, that? It goes against what most people think about <laughs> yeah. car washing. I like to look for the sunniest day possible. <laughs> you know, get into a single, take the shirt off, get the sponges out, yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no sponges. <laughs> no, no sponges, no direct sunlight. Yeah. So, so why is it important not to have direct sunlight on your car when you're washing it? Well, if you're washing your car in direct sunlight, the surface is going to be hot, yep. and that foam from those washes is going to dry up really quickly. Right, and that's going to create what swirls, marks on your paint, and just hard just to marks paint. and whatnot. Yeah, it'll yeah. be a little bit harder to get them out when you're rinsing it off, and you might have to rewash it again. Yep. Um, so if you've got cover like this, or you can go under cover there, it's just exactly what you're after. Yeah, right. It makes it so much easier, so much faster. You're not racing against the sun to then wash it off again afterwards. And that final tip is, as soon as you rinse off all that wash, you want to dry it straight away with a microfiber towel. Because that way you're going to avoid any marks on it and you're going to get that shiny, nice, glossy appearance as soon as you're finished. So, Justin, when it comes to choosing the right chemicals for your four-wheel drive to clean it properly and not damage the paint, what's your best advice, mate? Best advice would be choosing a product that's specifically made for your four-wheel drive and where you're going to be taking it. Yeah, right. So, first off, we've got salt exterminator. We've been using that on the car and you've seen how easily that's taken away the mud and everything topside and underneath. Yep. And it's all about using the correct dilution ratios on that as well. Right, right. And give us a little bit of an example of that. So, you know, obviously you can read the instructions, it's probably got everything you need to know right on the back yep. here. But what's the what's general sort of rule of thumb? So general dilutions, if you're going for salt and sand, about a one to 10, a one to nine. Yeah, right, so not too much not at all. Not too much, it's, it's quite economical with that. Yeah, with really, beach. It, that's gonna last you a long time if you do a lot yeah. of beach driving. So one to nine with sand and salt and that sort of jazz. Yep. What have you been playing in bog holes like you have, mate? Playing in bog holes, well today we used a one to three dilution ratio. Yep. And as you can see, that did a, did, a did very a, nice job. Did a fantastic job. <laughs> now, made it very easy. What's the drama if you use something that's, um, you know, not really designed for, you know, vehicles, maybe like heavy machinery, yep. sort of heavy detergents. Mm. What's the effect of using that on your pride and joy? So it's just going to, over time, really bite into your clear coat, or if you've got a lacquer on top, you're yep. old school. <laughs> yeah. Um, over time, it's going to bite into that, degrade it, and just you'll see those fading and effects afterwards. Yeah. After a bit of usage. So, good advice. Get something that's actually made for your four-wheel drive that's not going to damage damage the paint, uh, dilute it the correct dilute ratio. Dilute it correctly. Um, you got some yeah. chassis shield. Chassis shield. Yeah, obviously that's <laughs> to protect the chassis. You yep. saw how easy the mud fell off the chassis. That works an absolute treat. It's mm. worth, that's a prevention though, isn't it? You prevention. do that before you yep. go out. So you clean your vehicle, you want to hit it with some chassis shield. So when you do go through some mud, everything just sort of falls off. It looks pretty clean under there. And we just basically hit it with a bit of sand assassin. We just flooded yeah. the area. <laughs> it all came off. And then what's this one, mate? The salt. That's salt seal. So that's just for your top side sealant. Yep. So you go one to ten, one to nine for that in your snow foam cannon, fill yep. the rest with water, spray it all over, leave it about five minutes and then rinse it off. Rinse it off as easy as that and yeah. it'll seal all the hard work you've just been doing. Exactly. I'm going to hand it to you, mate. For a Defender, she scrubbed up all right. No, it, it really is. It's absolutely gorgeous, mate. Now, this is not a brand new vehicle by any means. It goes to show, though, you do a fair bit of um, prep beforehand and just that regular maintenance of keeping it clean, it, it turns out just like this. And it's a good little tip. If you've got an older vehicle, yeah, don't clean it very often, i.e. me. Um, it's probably worth spending the time cleaning it properly and then sealing it off. Yep. So next time you go to clean it, it's super, super easy. Yeah, a couple of things that have stood out for me, mate, and um, you know, I've been washing cars, mind you, since I was about 10 years old. I was doing it for my parents before I even got my own first car. I think a lot of people are in the same boat as me. Um, number one, don't clean your car on a really sunny day out in the middle of the sun. Try and keep it shaded. That was a, a bit of an eye opener for me. It makes sense as well. I've, I've had it before where you're halfway through washing your car, all that soap dries on the vehicle. Um, number two is not using a sponge. That's, that was a new one. Don't use a sponge. That's, that's no, pretty, yeah, you okay. don't want and, those swirls and scratches. And it, and it makes pure sense as well. Last thing you want to be doing is rubbing, especially all the sand and grit into your paintwork. Microfiber cloth is a way to go. Give somewhere for any of that dirt and sand to go up and into so you can keep that vehicle looking nice. And um, the third one, of course, we touched on it just before, but after you've gone to the effort of washing your vehicle, use some sealant to protect the top yep. side by using some salt seal and then on the bottom side, using some chassis shield. Yep. And then, of course, you're gonna use your four-wheel drive off-road. It's gonna get dirty again, but when you do get it home, it's gonna be super easy to clean.
That's right. Mate, there you go. We'll never practice on this rig. I've got a couple in the shed that need a bit of a clean, so yep. <laughs> we might hang around I'll, and do I'll that. I'll sit here <laughs> and yeah. I'll just watch. <laughs> well, I should be pretty versed in it now, mate. Yep. Well, there you go, folks. I certainly picked up a few new tips and I bet you guys did too. Like I said, I've been washing cars for a long time and I thought I had it down pat, but it turns out you get the right gear and the right techniques and your rig can be looking like this. So do yourself a favor. If you want to get the products that we use today, the best way to do that is to support Justin's homegrown business. And the best way to do that is jump on his website, which is fullwheeldrivedetail.com. All right, mate, no, I'm serious about my cars. They're just in there. No, they're not that, that dirty, that's not that dirty. That's you. <laughs> <laughs>